A hundred years ago, Knoxville did something crazy, and no one stopped it from building it. This is Gay Street, the heart of downtown and an important business district. Before they built this place, Gay Street was a mess, being crowded with streetcars, carriages, automobiles, and people. And it all started with building a viaduct. And after some thought, the city was like, why don't we just cover the whole thing? Now we have a forgotten underground city. My name is Andreas, and this is How to Build the World. It is kind of hard to describe what the underground of Gay Street actually is. It is a bridge above anything else. Structural columns stretch from the railway intersection in the north to the bridge over to the river in the south, covering about 100 blocks of downtown. This place holds all the city utilities, water, electric, plumbing, you name it. The most mysterious thing is that it still has the original storefronts and sidewalks of the original Gay Street. You can also find some of the most random things like art or storage space. However, I cannot explore the whole underground stretch. This place is mostly sealed off. I was very lucky to get this footage because I basically went a whole day or a couple days finding ways to get down there. Not something I recommend other people doing, no matter how cool it is. But why was this place built in the first place? Why elevate an entire downtown street? I will tell you in a moment, but I must say, man, this information was hard to find at first. So here is my theory. The city was exponentially growing and they wanted to become a big city. Three out of four businesses in the city were located on Gay Street and everybody used the street. And I mean everybody. There were streetcars and automobiles and the street had bunches of horses, bicyclists, and especially people. There was such intense and overfilled traffic from all sides that eventually it was called the Death Dip. According to Jack Nelly, this beautiful man has written most of Knoxville's history. Basically, all of my resources are just his books. Thank you, Jack. Such a kind, beautiful man. Now, the death dip. The city seriously wanted to do something about that. The politicians had two major places to fix. To build an overpass on top of the railroad yard to the north, and to fix the old bridge in the south. In 1898, the first thing they did was rebuild the bridge in the south. Now the next part is going to be challenging to explain. I went through a whole textbook just to make sure my information was chronological, even though there was almost no information covered on this topic. This was until I found a newly published Jack Nelly book at the local bookstore after I did all of my research and recording of this video. Thank you, Jack. There was only one mention of this underground construction in THE Knoxville textbook. Only once! This was the largest construction project in the history of Knoxville in the early 1900s. And at first, I was not able to find the specific reason why downtown completely redid Gay Street. And I only found two online articles that covered some of the stories, but not its history, and no academic papers. But most of my theory revolves around the recorded pictures of the construction, and the surrounding political history happening at the same time. I must say, there was a lot going on back then. Knoxville's history shows that Gay Street's redevelopment was a priority of the businesses and elected officials. All of their efforts were to design a hyper-successful downtown district. But reality made it difficult. Knoxville did not have an urban planning department at the time. Instead, they utilized many of the urban planning practices from Nashville's charter to grow and expand their downtown. Sadly, this allowed for corruption and a lack of coordination. For example, Knoxville has a big problem with building illegal streetcars. Now, politicians wanted to build a viaduct. This was especially pushed by the mayor of Knoxville in that time. But sadly, Knoxville had no money. But things changed in 1917. Gay Street was still a traffic nightmare. But the city did something very interesting. Knoxville annexed and expanded its borders. So now Knoxville doubled its population and more than tripled its land mass. You know what that means, right? Now the city had money. So the city went on a spending spree to expand and improve the downtown area. Now the city started to build that viaduct, even though it looks more like a bridge than a viaduct. 
The purpose of the viaduct is so that Gay Street went over the railroad intersection. But then, Knoxville decided to go all out. They extended the elevated viaduct all the way across Gay Street, connecting it to the Southern Bridge. It seemed that it was planned from the beginning, and they wanted to make sure that that traffic was fixed and safe. This raised Gay Street 15 feet up, and erased all the problems and mistakes from the original ground level. Other cities have done something similar, like Chicago and New York, but they were built next to the water. Downtown Knoxville is literally on top of a hill. I could not find specific information on the Viaduct project. Every time I look up the year 1919, when it was built, there was some other serious issues on the newspapers that were covered instead. Researching the historic websites and archives, I only found one mention of the viaduct in the Knoxville's History Project website. All of the news articles at that time covered the race riots, the extremely high crime rate, labor unrests, the women's right to vote for the first time, and World War I. So yeah, people had more focus on other things instead of a local government project. After opening the elevated Gay Street on October 3rd, 1919, the largest race riot in the history of Knoxville happened, to the point that the National Guard had to stop the mob. So it was challenging to piece together the puzzle on why the city decided to elevate the entire street. Until I found that book at the bookstore. Jack Nelly straight up says, It established a broad permanent bridge over the railroad yards and has helped level the street which had previously resembled a roller coaster. Thank you, Jack. So much for my work. Which basically means everything that I've talked about before Jack finally just wrote it has been my correct hypothesis. The final product of Gay Street created a nicely leveled street which aligned itself with Market Square one street over. Without a doubt, this has been a very successful project. All the businesses of Gay Street may have lost their storefronts, but they have also gained an extra basement. In conclusion, Knoxville's Gay Street is an extremely unique piece of infrastructure. The original street was in such a mess that it needed an extreme makeover, and the city may have had the attitude that nothing is too much for Gay Street. The city did not have much opposition or urban planning laws to stop it from building extreme infrastructure. And this ended up creating something unconventionally fascinating right at the heart of Knoxville. Walking down the street, you may catch glimpses of the underground city and wonder what life might have been down there. Welcome to the underground city, and thank you for watching my video.